Hello there. This is Dr. Siki Narayan coming to you from Neo Trader. And today I thought uh, I would fulfill the requests of a lot of people who keep asking me about what books to read. I think the way to educate yourself is undoubtedly through books. And nowadays, of course, it is the age of video. So there are lots of videos. But the difference is that your ability to consume information through the video mode is somewhat limited compared to your ability to consume it through text. Now, text you can read at any point of time, whereas videos you can take it, uh, you know, in short bursts. So that is why if you see also uh, most of the videos that are in the market, if you see the older videos, they all ran into two hours and more. And as time went on, the videos have shrunk to 30 minutes and then 15 minutes and then 5 minutes. And now we have things like reels and shorts because people are unable to consume video and the message contained in it uh, beyond some uh, 30 seconds to a couple of minutes. So what can you learn in that period? So why video is definitely impactful. I must say that uh, text is much more longer lasting in terms of its uh, value that it gives you and what you can assimilate over a period of time, etc. So books will have their place in the scheme scheme of things. And today I'm going to discuss uh, some of the books that I think everybody who sees about technical analysis needs to read. So first up, uh, the uh, first set of books that I would ask anybody interested in technical analysis to read are two of them. One is John G. Murphy, which is uh, a general book on technical analysis, right? Both of them. The second is by Martin Pring. Now, these two authors, in my opinion, have written really seminal works on the subject of technical analysis. In the book form, it is the most comprehensive set of technical analysis that you will get. Both of them very nicely written, beautiful language, easy to understand, well illustrated, and... Uh, well, you can call them the kind of a Bible for technical analysis. In the past, uh, <coughs> I used to, at least when I was, uh, you know, learning technical analysis, I read so many more books, uh, which were all about the basics. And then you had books like Richard Schabacher and uh, so many others, courses. And all these books were the uh, foundational material. But I think... Um, Murphy and uh, Brink's book should do the trick, so without fail, these two must be read. Uh, once you have read about them, you will also read about patterns, etc. And there are lots of books about patterns, and people have been recommending a lot of books on patterns. I have nothing against them, but my only point here is that the traditional patterns as we used to know them, and all the patterns that were covered, for example, in Richard Schabacher's book, or in uh, Edwards and Maggie, which was the uh, kind of Bible for technical analysis, we tend to see them lesser and lesser because the markets have speeded up so much, right? So if, let us say, there were 13 patterns in the past of, of that, you are now only seeing some three or four patterns. That's how the markets have changed. So while the study of the patterns is still a good idea, so I would definitely recommend reading those books at your leisure the books on patterns, particularly books like Encyclopedia of Technical Patterns, Thomas Bulkowski. He has written two, three of them. Now, they have their place in the uh, library on technical analysis, but uh, for somebody who's setting out to cover the subject in decent detail, I think they can be read later. But the book on pattern that you must read is the one on candlesticks, because that is by far the most widely used technical charting method. And therefore, Steam is on two books. One is Candlesticks, and the second one is called Beyond Candlesticks. I think these are two uh, extraordinarily uh, kind of comprehensive books on Candlesticks. There are others who have written. Stephen Bigelow's books are there on Candlesticks. And uh, there are also one or two of the others which are quite decent. But read Steam, uh, Steam Nisson's books, and uh, then maybe you can go for other books. Um, as far as the patterns in candlesticks are concerned. And the offshoot in candlesticks is the uh, form of charting called Haikenashi. And uh, in Beyond Candlesticks, Steve Nisson also takes you into the other types of charting called Rinko, Kagi, Three Land Break, etc. 
Now, these have not really become too popular, but they have their merit. So if that area interests you, then Beyond Candlesticks is certainly worth reading. As well as book, uh, there aren't too many books on Aikenashi, hardly, in fact, a few. But uh, you can search them out and read, read them also. They will all be short reads because it's not too much in detail. Now, having finished the comprehensive book on technicals and having looked at the basic form of charting, which is candlestick charting, and if you do like a point and figure, which is another style of charting, then uh, Jeremy Duple is the person to go to. He has a book uh, specific to point and figure charting, and that is also something to look at. I think Tom Mark is another person who has written on uh, quite extensively on uh, point and figure. So those who want to go down that road, uh, these are the books for them. So once you're done with these basic books, then the next thing to do is to get an idea of how to think in the market, right? And for that, there isn't a better series than the ones written by... Uh, your, um, what's the name, I forget, the market wizards guy, uh, Schweiger, Jack Schweiger, Jack Schweiger is a guy. So Jack Schweiger wrote uh, the series on market wizards, market wizards, one and two, stock market wizards, and then he's also written on crypto market wizards, and that is the series he has been going on with. Very, very good series. You get to uh, hear about, read about, learn about, think about, uh, you know, inform yourself about how the big successful traders of the global markets, they all, uh, you know, approach their trading and investing, etc. So must read series are the Market Wizard series by Jack Schwager. Incidentally, Jack Schwager also has a basic book on technical analysis. I think it's called Starting Out in Technical Analysis. Very good book indeed. But uh, I would still stick with the first two that I mentioned. One of the books of Schwager that you must read is something called Schwager of Futures. It's a nice, fat, thick book, brilliantly illustrated with uh, examples, innumerable examples, and uh, lots of uh, different takes on topics. So if you are, uh, if you like Schwiegel's style, etc., then Schwiegel on Futures is, a, is certainly one thing that you must read. Now you have looked at uh, the comprehensive thing, basics, the whole thing explained to you. Then, then you have looked at patterns. Then you have looked at the mindset which is required and that is produced by champion trainers so that you can also train yourself to bring it up. Next thing that you should look at is momentum because momentum plays such an important role in markets and success in the market, analysis and trading, etc. So uh, the best books on momentum are once again by Martin Fring. There are many, many, many authors who have written on momentum, individual books on individual oscillators, etc. But I think market momentum explained by Pring uh, uh, in two volume set, which was published, I think, also by locally, by show of publishers. And I think you can get it from them. Uh, I think this is a complete treatise of momentum indicators and the philosophy behind them. What are all the factors that you should look for while, while you're studying momentum, etc. So Martin Pre on Momentum is the last word on it. If you like to take up a separate, separate set of oscillators, there's a brilliant book uh, uh, on uh, RSI by Sharp, and there is another book on ADX called ADX, uh, ADX Excellence, etc. And there are books by uh, Gerald Apple, which is dedicated to MECD, dedicated to ROC, because he's the guy who designed them. Right, so that there are so many books like that. John John Hayden has written a short treatise on RSI. So these are books that you can read later. There are many, many books on momentum, right? And momentum is important, so you must read upon momentum. Don't rely on the patchy knowledge that you get out of uh, short videos on um, YouTube, etc. Once you've done this, now you are pretty much set. You got the basics, you got most of the topics covered, you got your uh, mindset covered, you have your patterns covered with, uh, with the candlesticks, etc. And you are also well up for a well, well versed in momentum. This is the time for you to read something about how to combine all of them and become a good trader, right? This, uh, all these books will help you become an analyst if you want, right? Because you give you technical knowledge. Uh, from a theoretical aspect, but if you also want to translate them into good trading, 
Then you should read a book called Super Trader. This is by an author called Wen Wen Ketha. Wen Ketha has also written books on many elements, including detailed books on money management. So when you when when you want money management, Wen Ketha will also be an author you have to read. But Super Trader is a book you should not miss. Wen Ketha. Well, I think that will you know set things right in your mind. And uh, if Van Kithap sets it right in your mind, then Mark Douglas really drives it in deep and embellishes whatever Van Kithap says, and uh, all what the Market Wizard uh, series will say. And that is a book by Mark Douglas called Trading in the Zone. Mark Douglas actually wrote two books. First uh, was called The Discipline Trader, which I think personally is a more brilliant book compared to Trading in the Zone. But as Mark Douglas himself admits. That uh, the discipline trader is not such a well-written book. You have to plod through it, but for sheer brilliance in thinking about how to think about markets, I think there are very few books to my discipline trader. And therefore, if you can, uh, you know, whether the style that Mark used in that, and I have personally met Mark Douglas several times, and he has remained uh, a leading light in me changing my philosophies about the market. Unfortunately, for the world, Mark uh, passed away at the young age of about fifty-nine through a heart attack. May God rest his soul in peace. But uh, I think he did a fantastic job of explaining trading psychology in uh, to people through books. So, trading in the zone, very easy read, well laid out book, and that's a book that you should read. If uh, trading psychology interests you, then uh, another very brilliant book, but which will not give you any methods, nothing. It won't talk about charting this, that. It's a role, but it's all about how to play the markets. Uh, that is uh, in, um, the book by Tony Plummer, right? Uh, financial markets, I think, psychology of financial markets. There were two editions of it. The second edition came with a slightly different name. But it's one of the earliest books I've read in my life, and that you know changed my percept about the market almost completely. So Tony Plummer's books, fantastic reads, difficult reads. Let me warn you, not the run of the mill that you think you can sit in the train while you are traveling from point A to point B and read it. No, serious reading. Got to take time out and read them. Brett Steinbarger, another great author who. Uh, talks about market psychology in different different ways. There are many authors for market psychology. It's an incredibly important area, and therefore your education is not complete if you have not read books on trading psychology. Now, uh, after you have done all this, let's say your basic readings are all over, then you come to a little bit of specialized reading. And one of the things that you must become really a champion at when you are looking at charts and reading them. Is price action the study of price action, and no one has done a more detailed work on price action than Al Brooks. And Al Brooks has written a series of books on price action series, uh, for swing trading, for day trading, for longer pull, etc. Al Brooks, profusely illustrated, very very well done books. Al Brooks, that is the guy to remember. He also has many videos, so you can check them out after you read the books. Right, otherwise they are difficult to make sense out of. Okay, so now that you have moved a little further and slightly specialized on price action with this, then the next thing to deal with is multi time frame, right? Because chart action happens across multiple time frames, and you must be able to decipher uh, the current action across multiple time frames. And for this, an author called Brian Shannon has actually written a very good book. It's called Technical Analysis Using Multiple Time Frames. So we'll read them for Brian Shannon's book. This is not the book to read at the start. It is the book to be read later. That is why I am mentioning it down the line. So this is uh, Brian Shannon's book is another one that you should read. And once you have reached this stage where you can look at multiple time frames, and that is the time for you to introduce yourself uh, to the Elliott Wave principle. The Elliott Wave principle operates on the principles of multiple time frames because the pattern through time is the basic focus. Of the Elliott Wave Principle. So, Elliott Wave Principle is a book, the Bible. The only thing worth reading is Robert Prechter and E.G. Uh, e. Frost, the Elliott Wave Principle. And then there are so many works by Robert Prechter, right? And uh, you read this basic book. If it interests you, 
I think Robert Prechter is an absolute genius, right? Flawed or otherwise, people swear by him, swear at him and all of that. But I think he's a complete genius, a book you should read much later when you're thorough with all his principles. It's something called Prechter's Perspectives, which is a series of interviews with Prechter. I think that's a mind-blowing book to read, right? And then he has got uh, very detailed books on crashes and uh, how that converts into, um, you know, kind of manipulating the psychology of people and how it has happened through centuries. All brilliant books, right? So, Prechter, you can probably spend the next two years reading just Prechter's works and your mind will open up like nothing else, right? You may not use the Elliot Wave at all, but then your mind will open up really all of Prechter's stuff, so don't miss out on that. So, now that you have done it, and then you have now been training, and you have been practicing it, and you have been having success, failures, hits, misses, everything. I think a book has come along recently which puts all this in a phenomenal perspective. I think it's one of the finest books I have read on uh, the subject of technical analysis and trading. It's not so much about technical analysis at all. It's a book about trading. So, we are talking about books on technicals, but I think your ending point, finally, after you have done all this, only then, please remember, only then, because otherwise that book will not make sense to you and will sound like you know, almost flaky, because it talks about trading and the concepts behind it and the, the process behind it, the percepts behind it, everything behind trading, because what you see on the outside is just one action, buy or sell. And uh, either it is elation or it is depression with, with, with the result. But in and through all of that, what goes on is some a book called Alpha Trader, Brent Donnelly. I think that's a book for you should keep for the end. So I saved it for, at, uh, for the end of this video. So I went through all the various aspects that you will go through learning. And I've given you various books that you should read at each of those stages. Don't be in a hurry. I've been reading books for 50 years and I still continue to read them. <laughs> I still read them every single day. And I never thought of reading them because every time I read it, I get new perspectives, I get new learnings, even though it is the same book which I read 40 years ago. So don't shirk from the reading habit. Develop it if you don't have it. Persist with it because reading is the habit which has to get ingrained in you. There are few people who are natural readers. But then there are so many people they, who have to work at it. If you are not a natural reader, create that habit. It will serve you multiple, multiple, multiple times than whatever else that you may do. Thank you for joining me in this video. This is Dr. Narayan signing off. And if you need any other suggestions about any other topic, do write in to us. I'll be happy to reply to you. Thank you once again. Until we meet.